Hi, this is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. Today we're talking about light and how some plants need more than others. I'm hoping to show you by demonstration how much they need and why your plants probably aren't getting enough through my own successes and of course my own failures. Let's jump in. And we are in. Okay, let's get right into it. So this is a light meter, not very expensive one. And they will tell you how much in lux the light intensity is at a particular location. So let's just flip the lid off and give it a quick go. Okay, so we have it powered up and all I'm going to do is hold it wherever a plant is and that will tell me how much light that plant's receiving at that particular time in that particular spot. So these streptocarpus, for example, so I've got to hold it horizontally so that it's like perpendicular to the light source. Now I do obviously in the greenhouse have the natural light coming in. It's about as bright as it's been today and I've got the grow light overhead. So here you can see that it says 635 roughly looks and it says times 10 so we're talking of 6300 looks now that means absolutely nothing to you unless you look at these figures and these examples so i'll put them up on screen and i'll read them out as well and just explain a few things as we go along okay so knowing the looks reading or in other words the light intensity at a particular location is only any kind of sense to you if you realize that Plants that need high light tend to need between 15 and 50,000 looks. So these are high light plants. And I'm just going to tell you a couple of plants or two or three plants in my greenhouse that I grow that need high light. So the first one over here, I've cut it down mostly. There's a little bit of it left there is the Bougainvillea. That actually needs somewhere between 50 to 50,000 lux. I have two Plumeria over here. They are also high light that need between 15 and 50,000 lux. And finally, over here, this beautiful red bloomed Thunbergia. This is a Thunbergia brownie. This also is a highlight plant and it needs between 50 and 50,000 lux. Moving along to medium light plants. So we've got begonias, beautiful blooms on this begonia luxuriance. So I'll just give you one example there of the begonias. You've seen lots of my begonias before. These are medium light and these need between 10 to 20,000 lux. I also have down here a philodendron. And over here, there's another philodendron. This is philodendron micans. I've got one of my subscribers to thank for that purchase. They also need a medium amount of light between 10 and 20,000 lux. And over here, I have a recently pruned and also by the looks of it, recently munched Brugmansia, which is now in the greenhouse. I only brought it in a couple of days ago. That also is a medium light plant that needs between 10 and 20,000 lux. Let's move on to the low light plants. So over here, you've not seen this for a long, long time. This is my Escananthus, and this is actually a low light plant, only between five and 10,000 lux and it just happens to be next to the Hoya which is also I believe a low light plant between five and 10,000 lux and finally we have the ferns which are well known as being a shade loving plant so as the Sun comes out here in the UK for the first time all week let's just talk about some of those plants that I've just mentioned in relation to the amount of light intensity that they need and the growth that they've given me and see if we can draw any conclusions so we're starting off near the Bougainvillea and if you follow me for a while you'll know that I've had all sorts of trouble with the Bougainvillea yes I can get it to bloom and produce those lovely brights but it's never really looked very healthy and only recently have I thought it could be the light and this would seem to bury it out remember these need between 15 and 50,000 lux and what am I getting well, it says 300 and we'll call it 400 times by the 10. So we are 4,000 lux today here 
even though I've got the grow lights, but remember they're too far away. I've switched the LED light off at the side there because it flickers for you. So just so that you can see what it is. So it is way too low. And this is a plant that doesn't have a high tolerance. So clearly I'm not giving it enough light. I'm gonna have to do something about that. Over near the plumeria, remember 15 to 50,000 lux is what they need. And mine are getting roughly 3,000 lux. Way, way too dark for for them to my eyes it actually looks really bright i'll just scan upwards for you and you can see you might be able to see anyway the sun is out it's shining through the window i've got my grow lights up there but still over in this corner where this plum area is it's way too low i'm barely reaching 3000 lux and i need 15 at the very least so while these plants are looking pretty good for me this year they're still nowhere near blooming and that's very highly likely to be because they're not getting enough light and finally on the highlight plants the thumbergia which is looking brilliant at the moment but as we talked about on one of my recent videos the chances are very very likely that that's because i've had it outside for a lot of the time and i've only recently brought it in this last week so the growth and the blooms that you can see are probably because the temperature is a little bit better in here um, certainly the light when it was in here for the past two years is definitely been a problem so for me anyway highlight plants big big problem in the greenhouse unless I do something to address it let's have a quick look at the medium light plants and see how they're doing so we have a lovely begonia silver lace here doing really, really well. Begonias supposedly need 10 to 20,000 lux. Now again, I'm barely reaching 2,500 lux here, but these are one of those plants that seem to have a higher tolerance, even though the official, in quotation marks, lighting is between 10 and 20,000. They can generally cope with lower light conditions, as you can see here. Move it along here quite a difference it goes up perhaps by another thousand lux near that begonia move it over into the corner we have the griffon here again very very low light barely two thousand lux over there but at certain times of the year the sun when it's higher in the sky will reach over the garage and will actually shine over onto this particular begonia so i think what we've proven here with the begonias that even though the light is quite low and i'll just point you under here for this whitey i look at i look how low that is so you've got barely 1500 lux there remember they need 10 to 20 and that's considered to be a medium lighting so begonias are a really good house plant choice because of that our house plants are practically growing in caves in a temperate country it's so dark now the question is why do we think that it's light and the plants think that it's dark that is simply because our eyes have evolved over millions of years to let in as much light as possible so we get a false impression of how much light there is to me to my eye in this greenhouse it looks particularly bright at the moment with the sun out but to the plants, it's a completely different matter. A lot of tropical plants are used to high light because they're used to the tropics. And I'm really, really beginning to believe that I just don't have enough light in here. I thought it was solved by buying grow lights, but those grow lights would really need to be, you know, within certainly within a meter probably even closer if you read the information on it to get the maximum amount of lux at that particular location the difference between lumens and lux you can think of lumens as the power output of a light but that really very much depends on how close that light is so you might have a very very bright light but if those plants are too far away then the looks that they receive is just not going to be enough so let's have a quick look at the low light plants before we move on so we're over here looking at the escananthus which is about to bloom by the way i can't wait for that to, to bloom because that'll be the first time it's bloomed for me look how large it is now the hoya has really struggled for me and it's never ever bloomed now that's really down to the fact that i've got it in the sunniest part of the greenhouse and i put it there thinking that it would need as much light as possible but if i move this 
light meter just to where it is now so again we're getting about 2600 lux it really wants between 5 and 10 and that's considered a low light so you would say it's in a low light at the moment however when the sun is out and it is summertime this corner of the greenhouse gets an awful lot of light or certainly a lot more than the Hoya can cope with and that's possibly why it's never bloomed for me. The Escananthus is doing particularly well because I've had it in a shady position however I've now moved it over here just through one thing and another and just the fact that the sun has gone down behind the garage now at this time of year fortunately it's back in a position where it's in low light so that should do pretty well for me in this position however I'll have to remember that when it comes around to spring and summer that's going to have to be moved because it will get too much sun. The other low light plants that I've got the ferns are quite low down in the greenhouse so they should be okay they shouldn't be getting too much however when we look at the light meter because they're in the middle of the greenhouse they're actually getting more light intensity because they're right underneath the grow light so in actual fact i've got my ferns here getting somewhere between 5600 and 5700 lux and the plants that need high light are getting like a couple of thousand less than that how ironic and just as a control here i've come outside just to show you that the light meter does work perfectly well you'll notice that it says times 100 on there now so we've actually got uh, roughly well it's changing as the sun's just going in uh, it was roughly about 50,000 lux a few seconds ago as the sun's just gone behind a cloud it's dropped dramatically but it's still about 12,000 11,000 lux which is way more than what I'm getting in the greenhouse but you can see what a difference the light makes as the sun comes out there's the greenhouse and on that side we've got all these trees here giving lots and lots of shade and over here we have a garage which is also in the way giving even more shade so you can see from my experiences that I haven't always got the lighting right and buying that light meter has really pushed home that point to me so I'm gonna to have to do something about it so the question is what can we do and if you live in a temperate climate and you grow house plants the chances are that for you you've got the same problems as me that is the light is just too low for the plants that we've got so let's have a chat about what can be done okay so as far as I can see we can do two things firstly we can either grow plants that don't mind low light levels so we're talking about begonias we're talking about ferns and it's something you can really easily check on google before you go and buy a plant but maybe an escenanthus is something that you might want to give a go to hoya which is obviously a very popular house plant but the other thing we can do is we can try and improve the light now there is one really important point to keep in mind here you can buy expensive full spectrum grow lights i've got two of them which will give those plants the optimal amount of light providing that you've got them close enough and that will help them to photosynthesize and grow in the optimal fashion or you can buy inexpensive LED light and there's absolutely no reason why you can't use the inexpensive LED light they will brighten up a dull corner and they will give those plants at least some chance to make use of the available wavelengths to photosynthesize so we're talking about boosting the natural light here none of these plants are getting no light at all they're getting some light and i'm giving them between 11 12 hours a day so in my particular case i'm not really in a situation at the moment to go and buy any more expensive grow light if that's something you want to do and you've got the money for it go ahead buy some expensive grow light and make sure to put those lights as close as possible but if you're in the same position as me get some inexpensive LED strip light or some spotlight and strategically place them around the house or whatever it is that you've got those plants so in conclusion it does indeed appear that many of my problems are down to the light levels but I know there is now something I can do about that and it's not going to cost me too much thankfully of course there are lots of other growth factors that could be affecting the plants that make them so that they're not growing quite as well as they could be but for some reason we always overlook light we think because we bought the grow lights 
everything should be fine. Hopefully this video has pointed out to you that that's not always the case and that there are other factors concerned with lighting that you may not have thought of. So give me a thumbs up if that helped in any way whatsoever. And what I would like you to do is put in the comments if you're gonna do anything about your plant, if you think that perhaps this has struck a chord and you need to investigate your lighting situation. And what I think you should do now is go and watch this video over here all about humidity, because that will really perhaps be a game changer too. So for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.